everybody, this is MJ with Creative Minds. Hope you're having a great day today. Today we'll be making this pendant and these earrings and this ring. So it's, this is a cute, cute pendant for any occasion. And we have worked hard to come up with it. And basically we would like to share it with you. So if you would like to see how this is made, and you'd like to know how to make one of your own, then just keep watching. First thing I wanted to let you know is that for this project, all the clay we're using today is Primo clay, and it came from polyclayplay.com. That is our favorite place, our go-to place for ordering our supplies. And they are wonderful people to work with, um, and that is where we shop. We do most of our shopping for our our gear and our supplies that we need for making our projects. So if you haven't done it yet, visit polyclayplay.com and um, see they have a great rewards program. They have a lot of you you earn points and you earn percentages. You know you can get percentages off of your sales price. So go ahead and, and type that in and take a visit to polyclayplay.com. That being said, what you're going to need today is, and I've already conditioned all this clay and everything and pretty much sized it up, but you're going to need some silver, some black. Now the colors of the flowers are up to you. If you're going to do what, what I'm doing, you're going to want a red, a yellow, and an orange. And basically that's what you're going to need to do this this project. And like if you're kind of eyeballing how much you'll need uh, for portion of it. Okay, and I'll let you know what they're rolled out to as we go. So we're going to start out with our silver clay. First of all, the silver clay has been rolled out to, it's a zero. I have an Atlas 180 and the widest setting of the pasta machine. So you have it set up to that. Generally when I cut things out I use the saran wrap, clean wrap, whatever it is, however you call it, whatever you call it. So there we go. When you use clean wrap it gives you a really nice beveled edge when you cut it out as opposed to just having straight edge and then it goes straight down from on the side. So you're going to need a circle cutter about as big as you would like your necklace, your pendant to be. I have a set of circle cutters and this is the size that I chose for the pendant. So I'm going to go ahead and um, place it on here and give it a press and a twist. Like that. And then you can just go ahead and take this off. Sometimes as it did here, it doesn't come off of your your actual clay piece. If that happens, the best thing to do is to grab some scotch tape so you're not digging in your clay. And I can see the edge of it right there, but I'm just for purposes, I'm going to show you. You just st stick the tape on there and it comes right off. So it was just a little tip for you. So now you can see that we've cut this, this piece out. And I, I don't know if you can notice that in the camera, but it's got a nice rounded beveled edge here, as opposed to just being cut straight down. And then that piece is done. We have our black next, okay? This is our backing, and it's cut out on a zero, the same as the front. And I'm just, I need to put a pattern on this, so I'm gonna use my armor all spray. And actually, I'm going to spray a little bit on the board so nothing gets stuck, if that helps. Put a little bit on there. And, okay. So, I chose this. This is like a daisy pattern. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it's a rolling pin. I've had this for a long, long, long time. So, I'm just going to go ahead and roll out, putting even pressure. And now we have our daisy print on there. As you can see, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's just a bunch of daisies. Take my cutter 
and um, we're beveling our edges. So I'm going to go ahead and place this back on a little bit further over. Okay, and I'll just find, this is probably pretty good right here. So I got some... So just, again, press and turn, and then you can just take this off. And so now we have our back. One thing I, I wanted to mention is I'm choosing between a couple of bales here, but these bales are kind of strange because they just have a tiny little... I've used them, though, a million times. They do work. Uh, they just have a tiny little loop in there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a really small loop, and you don't have much playroom there. So what I do to get this on and hopefully make it stay on, I'm turning this silver one over and then I'm going to grab some bacon bond, which you can get at polyclayplay.com as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and put some bacon bond on the back of this. Not, you don't need too much. But then at the top, I'm going to place some bacon bond right here where I'm going to affix, affix this part here. And this is pretty thick of a piece. Like I said, it's a zero on my pasta machine. So I'm going to place this, and I'm sorry, excuse my hands, place it right on where the screw is, is into that glue. But I also, so I'm going to take it a step further, and I'm going to use an object, and I'm just going to kind of press down a little bit on that screw to get it wedged in to that, to this piece. I don't want to go right through to the other side. I just want to wedge it in. You're going to want to position this however you want it to be on the back. And I think this is good right here and just put them together. And they should marry up pretty good because we haven't messed too much with them. And then that little part up there, see I pressed a little bit too hard, but that's okay, I'll fix that. With my tools, see right here, I got a little bit slap happy and I pressed a little hard. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press that in. That's what I mean, you don't want to press it so hard to where you're making an impression on the outside of the clay. You, that is what you don't want. You just want it to go on the inside. Therefore, and that's okay because this is going to blend in with everything we're doing on this piece anyhow. But really, my main concern is just to get these married up and so that they are nice and there's a nice uh, clean, crisp line all the way around. And that's my main concern. So all I'm doing here now is I'm just taking my fingers very gently and making sure that they are married up. And they look to me that they are, that, like that there's nothing hanging over where I see there's, you know, black hanging over somewhere or silver hanging over anywhere else. So we're good with that. So now I have this great tool here that has a very, very sharp point on the end of it. And I, I don't know why my camera is like wanting to focus a million times, but anyways, this works great for making designs. So what I do here is I want these to be spaced out wide enough to where I can fan those flowers out really well. So I'm going to go to the first one here and I'm going to put a line straight down and I'm going right to the bottom and you want it deep enough to where it's going to pick up your antiquing, but not to where you're marring the clay. And the middle one goes a little bit taller, and it's okay if you go a little bit too high because you can always put the flower right over top of that. And then this one is a little bit shorter, so we go a little bit out here. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some detail of maybe some leaves or whatever. So what I do is I make my little line for where the leaf is going to go, for example, like that, and then make sure that it fits good back in there. And remember, you want these to be deep enough to where it's going to pick up your antiquing, okay? 
And then I happen to have a, a leaf stamp. I don't know if you can see this. This is a great tool to have. This is, comes in a set and there's all kinds, there you can see it now. There's all kinds of different attachments or what, what have you. They, they come in a set of like 16 or something like that. I'm really bummed because I'm missing my flower cutter one, but they just come in some really cool um, designs and you can do an awful lot of detail with that. But this one right here is a leaf. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp my leaf on here. And um, sometimes I'll do like another sprout coming from the bottom with like nothing there, like that. Another leaf here, and maybe a sprout here. I call them a sprout. It's a twig, I'm not sure. Let's put the leaf in there and see. Okay. Who was that? And I'm going to do the other leaf over here. So we have a nice little design going on here. Okay, sorry. Dogs are barking and everything's going crazy. But So I hope you caught that. What we're going to do is we're going to come around here and I'm going to just make a little design starting here. just to give it a little bit more. So now we have a little bit more of a design. Okay, what we're gonna do next, I gently turn my piece over and I'm going to use a little bit, of, this is a pan pastel, and this is a black fine pearl medium. And it's already black, but I'm just gonna make it a little um, pearlescent back here. I'm gonna just go over this, just the very back of it uh, with this, it almost looks like it's getting lighter, but it's just giving it a pearlescent sort of a look. And it's probably not going to get in the recesses very much, and that's okay, because I'm going to go over it with a micro powder called Mink. You know, it really doesn't have to match exactly the front. Like, I'm not going to do a startling um, yellow back here or anything like that. Um, but this, this right here is Perlex powder, and this is called Mink. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this with my fan brush, just a little bit on the back. It almost gives it a silvery look. Okay, it's kind of a mirrored look. I just like the look of the mink, pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this carefully. We're gonna bake this right after we do this next step. So I'm gonna put this right on here and make sure everything's good to go. The only thing we gotta do here now is I've got some black acrylic paint and this is just Craft Smart paint which you can pick up just about anywhere. And I am going to paint this entire front with the black acrylic paint. Just the front, not the sides and all that, but just the front. So what I'm going to do now is throw this in the oven and bake it just for about six minutes or so, five or six minutes. It just depends on depends on how long you want to wait. But you're basically going to be setting your background and you're going to be drying the paint into these places. So we're going to do that and we'll be right back. 
While that's baking, I thought I would bring out that if you're gonna make this into a set and you wanna make some earrings or a ring with it, then you're gonna wanna cut yourself the front and backs for those. So I have a smaller cutter here for, I need two earrings and these are just posts that I make. And I do the same size for a ring. Okay. And then I'll pull that up. I want the front of these to be beveled, but the backs are are different because the backs are going to be well, one is going to be adhered to a ring. And the other one, the other two are gonna be into earrings. So I want the backs to be nice and thin. I've got a piece of black here. This was rolled out on a four on my, on my atlas. And what I'm gonna do is gonna put a little bit of that um, design on this as well. And it's really more for the earrings than anything. So I want to make sure I capture two of the big flowers. Okay, and roll this on there. And I don't want to press too hard because I, I really don't want to squish this any thinner than I already have it cut. I just want to get those impressions out. So what I do with this here, as you can see the daisies are on there is basically I take my cutter and I surround the larger flower with it. Cut that out, which will go for the earring. And it, it, it just about, it almost gets the entire flower. And then the ring doesn't really matter because the ring is gonna go on a ring base. The ring base that I'm using is, it looks like this here. It's just, um, it adjusts it's, it, to any size and you can adjust at the top, which I prefer rather than at the bottom. I can't stand those ones that adjust at the bottom. So that's gonna be the ring base for that. And the necklace, what I do is I cut out pieces of memory wire and I have them ready to go. And usually at one end, I have one side that has a loop on it ready to attach its finding. And the other side, I leave just as a straight wire so I can slide whatever it is that I made onto the neck so it's ready to go and already sized up. The only other thing that we have left to cut out would be our flowers. So we have the orange, the yellow, and the red. So obviously for, we're gonna, the, the orange uh, flower is, the yellow flower, I'm sorry, is the largest one. The next largest is the red. I should put them in the right order so I don't confuse. And then the next largest would be the orange. And I just use small circle cutters for that. So you, you do not wanna use the saran wrap for this. You just wanna cut these out straight. So you need one for the necklace. You need another one or two more, I should say, for the earring, and you need one for the ring. So you need four of those yellow ones, and then the red one, you just need one for the necklace. And these, the thicknesses of, these, of this clay, by the way, is a two on my machine, on the Atlas 180. And then we just need one for the uh, orange one for the necklace. So you're going to marry, you're going to marry together the silver and black pieces. So basically you're going to stick some bacon bond, just a little bit, onto the back of the surface. I like the bacon bond things. I know that they're gonna melt down and, or warm up in the stove and bond, but I personally like to use it for these type of things. And so you just wanna lie those on there and make sure that they're married up good. We're gonna wait on this one. I'm gonna gently take that off because we're gonna need to put the ring, the post, through that black part. So basically that's where we're gonna leave that. Okay, so these are ready over here to be, put, have the flowers put on them and decorated. And then we'll go ahead and marry those back posts on there. Okay, so 
I've got this out of the oven and it's cooled now. And so basically we've antiqued it and now we need to sand a little bit and very gently. I have a sanding block. I think this is a four, I wanna say it's a 400. But what you're going to do is just gently go back and forth on this front side and just, you don't put much pressure at all. You're just going to sand off some of the paint, but you want to leave it in the recesses. So I'm going to continue sanding this and then I'll be back when I'm finished. And also I'm going to describe a little bit more about another sanding step that you can do before you're moving on to the next step. So I'll be back when this is completely sanded to my liking. Okay, I think I have it pretty much where I want it to be as far as the antiquing goes. The one thing I wanted to share with you is that you can continue your sanding just in case some of that black got around the side. You're going to want to sand that on the side to make sure you're back to your gray and black. So just go around and if you had any any issues when you married the two pieces together, you can sand them and make them look much better together. So just take your time with that and I'll be back. Okay, so once you're finished with that, you should be able to go and look at your piece and see that it's nice and has nice markings where the this side here is, is married nicely to the mink and then the front just only has left the antiquing that you wanted to keep. So now we can begin to decorate. So start by placing the flowers where I want them to go and then I will use a little bit of bacon bond just to make them stay there. But again, the red one goes first and I try to make sure that there's a space between them so that, because they do spread out. And so I will start with the bacon bond process. I'm just gonna put a little bit, a little bit on there, good. So now that we're finished with that, just one thing I want to explain is that I'm not doing any particular flower. This is art and I do these flowers in my own way. So basically I'm not following any rules. <laughs> so and you don't have to either. So I always seem to start with the yellow one and I do that by... I and you can do this any way you want, but I, I'll just go ahead and speed this up and you can see how I do it. seems good with the yellow. The only thing that I do extra is I'm just going to put in a spot to mark where the seed beads are going to go so that I know they're going to go right there. Okay, so I started on the red already. I finished the yellow, if you can see that. Okay, and I put a little mark in the center where we'll be adding some seed beads.
actually is better if you go from the outside in. As you can see here, it's making some nice lines. <laughs> Okay, so I use these glass seed beads. These are by Panda Hall Elite, and they're just plain glass seed beads, and there's a lot of them in there. <laughs> so what I do is just put some Bacon Bond in the centers, and then I have this little seed bead scoop, and that really helps a lot if you use it. Something about this flower being so big on top is really bugging me, but <laughs> it's got its own character. We'll say that. So I just uh, will spread this out a little bit on the hole here. Not the hole, but the space. And we just grab some seed beads with the scoop on the end and just and they're still gonna probably go everywhere around it that's okay just need a, a little bit okay and then you can just guide them into place carefully so you don't mess up your work <laughs> And the, the last part that I do is I throw on our little name on the back of this. So before baking, and then I put it in the oven. Just going to put my little tag on the back. I have these ready to go, so not a big deal to add it before baking. Just want to make sure all those corners are down. And there we have it. So we'll go ahead and put this in the oven. Um, you want to bake it according to manufacturer's directions. This is going to go in for for me for about 45 minutes or so. Okay. Okay. So while that's baking, we have actually. A couple other responsibilities here. We have the earrings and the ring to do. Basically we're going to do the same thing that we did for those flowers on the necklace. This one has already already been married so you have the the black and the gray together here on this one. This one is going on the ring okay so you you don't want to squish or anything like that you just want to gently put them together so they touch and that they're you know secure then you can put the put a little bacon bond you just put this right in the center it almost encompasses the whole space but that's okay that's kind of what we want the earrings before we can put the backings on we have to bacon bond the <coughs> earrings together here and do the flowers before we can put the backings on so we're just gonna go ahead and stick those in the center and work on those while that is baking I found that one one little trick is that you can take when you're making your pizza like in the beginning if you press down with the side of the the very side of the tool instead of making a scrape but rather press it in like that press it in like that sort of adheres it to the base and it gives you guides on where you're going to be scraping and it also kind of gets that clay ready for you to do whatever you're going to do with it so why i'm doing it that way and this one i'm going to kind of go from the outside in for now and it's not warmed up and workable real good. It's kind of flaky right now, but it will soften up as I continue to do this.
But I'm pulling it inward because if I can make it a little bit smaller, I'd rather make it smaller on top of the earring and the rings than larger and spread out. So I'm gonna keep it at this size. So that's why I'm going inward. And then some I'm going to go outward just to so that we can see a brush stroke going toward the out uh, side of it so that of course it, it looks more natural. But as you can see it sort of makes the flower spread out more and we don't want it bigger than its base so. I'm just going to do this just a little bit and then I'll go back to going inward. Okay, for this ring, you can decide for yourself. Some of you may want to put rhinestones or something like that. I'm choosing the seed beads because I've noticed that when the pieces are all put together and you put them on, they look much more collaborative with the same things in the middle. I made one once that had a clear rhinestone in the center and it just looked like an oddball with the, with the rest of the set. And then I made another one with a small black rhinestone. I just think that it looks better with the unified look and that would be seed beads in this case. Unless I put rhinestones on the flowers on the pendant, then that would be different. try something with this pair right here that I've never done before when making these. If you're experiencing, with the Primo clay you really shouldn't experience too much of it, but if you're experiencing where you go to make your lines and it's dragging through the clay and you're seeing clumps of clay and stuff like that, maybe you didn't condition it enough or maybe you came back to do a step, you had conditioned it and it dried up a little bit and you're ready to now do it. What I did was I took a little tiny drop, which I don't really have this problem, but I, I want to see if this helps, of this Sculpey clay softener. Just a tiny drop and put it on top of one drop on this, one drop on this, and I'm smoothing it on like this. And then I'm going to proceed to do this. So I just want to see if it makes it a little, little easier. So... Remember, at first we, we press down. I mean, you can press or you can make lines to do your pizza. It doesn't matter. However you want to do it. Just as a guide to let you know which way you're going. And these are, the, again, these are the earrings. And, what I, and I see already that that softener is a nice transition. It makes the, the clay almost like butter. pretty much finished with this uh, now. I'm going to hold off on putting the seed beads for just a moment because I'm going to put the earring posts 
on to these. So what you need are a couple of just regular earring posts. If you wanted to make them dangly, you could by putting a hole in here or by putting maybe an eye pin in the side here. But these are post earrings, so what I'm going to do is to gently, I've been putting pressure on them, so I'm going to gently lift this off of here. And just going to go ahead and put some bacon bond on the back. Sorry, my bacon bond's getting kind of low over here. Okay. And you're going to want to put the earring post on, kind of look and see where you want it to go. So it'll be up towards the top a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but up towards the top a little bit. And then you're going to take the black backing. So you're going to slide this over top. So you just kind of aim, aim toward the, when you feel that needle come through there, you can just slip it down like that. And then of course you're going to marry the flower with the, the gray with the black and make sure that your earring post is straight. So make sure everything is nice and straight. You don't want to squish anything. <laughs> you have to be really careful with this part. Just lightly, 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 lightly tap to get that on there and just kind of look around here and make sure that you don't have any overhang of anything. And you can always with your X-Acto knife after this comes out of the oven, if there's a little bit of black sticking out around the side, you can go ahead at that time and you can just slice it right, you know, smooth it, slice it down to where it's even. And I think with these, I think it's going to be easier for me not to fumble around with doing the seed beads uh, now because I want this to stay straight. Let me see. Let me think about it while I'm putting the other half on. Blade. So, bacon bond. I kept it tipped that way so that I wouldn't have to wait for it to come down. And then again, you're going to put this up towards the top, about the same area you did on the other one. And once again, you're going to just marry these together. But I put it down here to tap it to make sure the earrings are straight. And that's my main concern. You don't want them bent or curved in. You want them nice and straight. I'm going to bake these first because I'm going to bake them like this straight down and I will do these seed beads. These seed beads will go on after they're done baking. So what I'm going to end with here is a little bit of this mica powder that we put in the back of the pendant so that it'll match on the back of the earrings. I'm going to go ahead and put some of this mink right onto the back of this. we go. I'm just looking at it from all angles here to make sure everything's cool and it looks good here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these in. I'm going to check that ring and see if the ring is done. Okay, so I put those in for about 45 minutes and we're just letting these now cool down. And then all we're going to have left to do with these is add a little bit of paint to the flowers just to give them a little shimmer. You could use mica powder before it went in the oven or you could use some paint afterward. And I have some really cool paint that, that I can put on these. Okay guys, uh, like I told you, I'm going to add some paint and not a whole lot, just a little bit. Um, this is the paint, I don't know if you can see it, wait a minute. This is the paint we're adding. And it's really cool paint. The yellow is, this is color shift paint and it's made by folk art. And this paint is awesome because you're probably not gonna be able to see this on camera, but this shifts in certain lighting. It will shift from a yellow to a, like, a, like an orangey gold color. 
and it's really pretty but it's very subtle so it's beautiful if you just kind of hit the high areas of the flower with that and then we've just got some artist loft metallic red and artist loft metallic orange and that's just gonna bring out and like I said I could have used mica powder uh, if I wanted to but I decided I like the paint um, better so I just I just put a little bit I don't go crazy with it on the petals if you will and it sort of just brightens them up a little bit Okay guys, so I'm back and, but what I wanted to tell you is, uh, I wanted to give you a little tip uh, first. And what it is, is remember when we were doing, I believe it was the earrings. I went ahead, because right now I'm just gonna be straight up, we're doing these in bulk. So we have quite a few of these cut out already and we have quite a few of them like ready to be made. And as you and I both know, when clay sits out for a while, it begins to harden up and become more brittle and it, it's no longer conditioned. So, but these I had cut out with on camera so these were not part of the ones that we have already cut out that we're working on constantly because we're making them for an event so what i wanted to tell you is that when i chose to use some of the, some of this sculpey clay softener on the earrings it really worked well on that it really did them justice and they even baked better and you may not see a difference between the baking of these items but I do see a difference and I just I just I do I think it's much neater I think they turned out much neater and I think they turned out just better and then I am going to use this while I use these other pieces that I've already conditioned or you know and they've been like all day we've been working with this stuff so some of them um, for instance for instance here's another set that I have cut out ready to go. And this has been sitting out for quite some time. We do have something covering our area, but it's still been sitting out uh, and has not been worked with yet, except for when we initially conditioned them. So when I go to do the design on here, I'm going to use a little bit of this first and just rub it around there because I think that it's going to lessen the the drag when when I pull the the tool across there to make the design I think it's gonna lessen the drag and the crumble or anything like that I think that it's gonna cut down on all of that and it's just gonna make the piece look much better so I kind of learned something today in that when you have some clay whether it be just conditioned like ours was or not and you're doing some sort of etching or carving or whatever into the raw clay the conditioner does a good job so a thumbs up for that because I rarely use this my partner uses this most of the time on um, some of the more um, if the clay is a little bit older or if the clay, you know scrap clay or whatever she needs to soften it up she likes to this is her go-to thing i don't usually use this at all 
So, um, I, not that I don't like it, it's just I don't feel the need to. I, I grind uh, the, down to the millstone and, and work with my clay until it becomes soft and pliable on my own. But, I learned something tonight about this, and I like its effects. So, keep that in mind. And again, you can get this at polyclayplay.com. Right now, if you wanted to go there and order some. So what I did off camera was we were baking, I believe, the earrings, and I had baked them upside down, so I did not yet have the seed beads on. So all I have done is, since you guys had seen, and this is upside down right now because it's drying, because I did glaze the back of this as well as I glazed the back of the earrings. So those are all set to go. But what I did also was I put obviously put the seed beads on. I don't remember if I had had the seed beads on the ring yet or not. But I went ahead and did the seed beads and I painted the yellow um, color shift paint on there. So all we had left to do was glaze. And was not sure whether I was going to come back on camera to do the glazing, but I decided to come back on and talk about the clay softener and let these dry a little bit. And uh, then I was going to walk you through a little bit of the glazing technique on top of the flowers because there's a little... A little bit to that especially if you're if you're a beginner if you're not a beginner and you're well seasoned there's no need to to watch the glazing part um this is pretty much what it is it amounting to it's amounting to so but any rate at any rate um this has been drying for a while and it's it's pretty much it's dry to the touch um just you know it might be a little um, little tacky in some spots, but not really. It's pretty well dry. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm just going to hold it like so at, to, at the top here. And I've already got this placed on a memory wire and I've aff affixed that to in the back of my, my memory wires. I always put, especially if I've got a pendant hanging like this, I always connect magnets in the back so that you can easily just pop it on and pop it off and you don't have that worry of the memory wire, um, you know, sagging down or falling off. So what I do to gloss, glaze these is basically I go ahead and pour Hopefully this is still open. I this is an I love this this bottle of this glaze because it's it's a squeeze bottle, and I squeeze some out on each of the flowers because I really want those to shine, and um, that's going to be the important part. And there's no paint drying or anything on these, so I'm good to go. So I just sort of tap the glaze around the flower. Just to make sure that it's covered well. I mean, I'm not, I don't want it gobbed on there, but I definitely want it to be reflected. And once I get those flowers done, then I go ahead and I, I begin glazing around the rest of it. And that just takes a little bit. It's, it really doesn't take that much. I just put a little dot here and there of this wonderful glaze and I, I will just go over it with my brush and I hold it in the light once I get it on there and I think it's a good covering and I actually have to go around the sides of this because I did not glaze around the sides yet and the reason I'm glazing polymer clay does not have to be sealed polymer clay does not require a sealant but when you paint on polymer clay or put mica powder or anything like that you have to seal that so I'm just going ahead and putting a glaze on all of it um, even the areas where I don't have any 
anything there but the clay. So then what I do is, this is pretty well done, I'm just kind of moving it around and making sure that I don't have any streaks, is I kind of tilt it in the light. When this is tilted in the light, I can see whether or not I've got shine, if I've got any streaks or anything like that. So I just go back and forth like that and make sure that I check all the angles and make sure that I haven't missed anything and make sure that it's, I don't have too much gobbed up anywhere, you know. Um, that's the main thing with the glazing. And pretty much that's it. It will dry to a beautiful uh, shine. It almost gets a porcelain-like look to it when you when you glaze these flowers so heavily you know it gets a really nice beautiful shine to it so i will do the same thing and with the ring just and the seed beads it's okay if you get glaze on them they're not going to the it'll dry it'll dry all dry clear love to know if you make this and if you do and you do any other variations of it or something please post it below in the comments I would love to see what you're doing and if you have any questions or concerns or comments about this please feel free to write in the comments section we will get back with you and again um, if this has helped you in any way please help us by giving us a thumbs up share this video if you can and also subscribe to our channel because the more subscribers we receive that tells us that you would like to see more videos like these and we want to be there for you and just as a side note the website is almost up and running www.creativemindscommunity.com very soon it will be opening and you will be able to join and this is again a community if you saw our first video where we talked about what we wanted to do this is a community for all artists to join you can share your work you can collaborate you can sell your stuff for free this is a totally free site for everybody so there will be a lot of things to do and a lot of ways to share and communicate and so we hope to see you there so keep checking back um, at www.creativemindscommunity.com for the site to open you will see an area where it says join our free community and when you click on that you'll be able to join the site and get into the community but we're just finishing up some final touches with it right now along with making all this these things and trying to do videos so it's been kind of crazy so but just keep a watch out for that and again thanks for watching have a great day and we'll see you next time bye bye
temporary page up right